So one of the things that the electric fence does not come with is a grounding rod. Uh, and that looks like this. this. They have two different types. They have a galvanized type and then they have a copper type. This one here is about a half inch diameter. It's uh, about 10 foot long. Uh, depending on your location and probably the moisture in the ground and uh, what's in your ground, uh, they recommend going anywhere from 3 feet to 6 feet in the ground. So what that means is they want you to pound this guy uh, 3 to 6 feet into the ground. <laughs> if anyone's ever pound a stake into the ground when you've been camping and you're just trying to pound a stake 6 inches in the ground <laughs> and you can't do it, that's what I'm worried about on this uh, <laughs> pounding this three feet into the ground. I suppose once I, if I don't hit major rocks, I would think after the, the first sediment layer, if I get past all the rocks, then maybe I can do okay. Uh, the other thing that I feel that you really need in order to pound this in the ground is uh, a hammer isn't going to do it. If you have a hammer, you're just hammering the very end of this, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, there's two ways of doing it, and I'm going to show you one of two ways, um, and that is with a pile driver, and it's basically a pipe that has handles on it. Uh, I actually have one, but I don't have it here right now. Um, but anyway, it's a pile driver. Um, it's a pipe with the handles on it, um, and you basically set over the top of this, and you just keep pounding this pole into the ground with this pipe that's over top of the end of it. Um, what I've done, which I'm going to try, I'm not sure it's going to work, um, I had this for my well pump to pull the uh, to pull the uh, uh, piping from the well up on the bottom. It uh, screws in and uh, to the well and that's what uh, allowed me to pull uh, my plumbing up from my well. So I thought, well, hmm, this would fit really good over the top of this. The only thing I'm worried about this is a galvanized cast iron uh, T fitting up here and I think there's a good possibility that I'm gonna bust that T fitting and crack it and it's <laughs> it's not gonna work. But the, what's nice about this is it's nice and long so I don't have to worry about it bending this rod uh, until I get it about three feet uh, into the ground. So I'm gonna give it a try and see how that works. Um, and the other thing is, is uh, my fence is going to is wrapping around here, and it's going to come over and come uh, about two inches away from this uh, corner of the uh, chicken mansion here. Um, they don't want it to touch because of the, uh, the wires, the bare wires that are in the fence, it doesn't want you to grounding to um, the you know any material like wood or trees. So uh, I need to leave a li little bit of space. I'll probably put some non-conductive plastic to fill that space, but I just don't want it to touch the wood which has moisture and stuff in it. So my uh, electrical panel when I run wire wiring out to the chicken coop uh, will be on this side here so I'll have a ground wire that will run out from my electrical panel down and clamp on to this grounding rod that's that'll be in the ground. So I'm going to hook this up and uh, we'll see if I can pound this sucker into the ground. chicken right here. <laughs> Watch out little chicken. I'm going to put this rod in you're going to get spiked. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Go. Go. Alright. There I got it started. So right up there. Right up there <laughs> is the end of it, and uh, I guess I need a ladder.
So I was off to a good start, but it was did exactly what I thought it was going to do. <laughs> Busted right through the top of the uh, T. Um, I knew it's just uh, cast iron, so it wasn't going to hold up. But hey, I got it down about four four feet into the ground, so that's pretty good. And so I'm going to go grab the um, other uh, pile driver. Show you what that looks like and we'll finish this off with the with that other one all right so i'm back this is uh what a pile driver is or at least that's what i call it uh, maybe it's not even called a pile driver um, but it's got the hole in one end it's got a heavy metal cap on it and you do just like i was doing with that uh, pipe there uh, it's mostly for those uh metal stake poles that you pound in the ground and you just put this over the top of it and you just let the, it's pretty heavy and the, the weight alone just dropping it will just keep pounding it um, your stakes into the ground so I'm gonna remove my my rig there and uh, try using this to pound it uh, as far as it can go workout so I have it uh, let's see it was 10 foot long and uh, I have about five feet in so that's pretty good they say three to six feet so if I'm five feet it's good enough all right now I'll cut it off at the, now I'll cut it off at the ground Project. So now we got the uh, grounding rod clamp. Pop that open. To the uh, grounding terminal. Pretty simple. they also don't have in the uh, 
premium uh, electric fence is um, they don't have the grounding uh, rod clamp and they don't have a lightning arrester uh, but their directions say that they recommend it. Uh, the lightning arrester basically um, uh, if your fence gets struck by lightning and the surge comes through um, instead of the electrical current from the lightning going up and into where your controller is at it goes through here and goes down to the path of least resistance um, and down to the um, um, grounding rod. Attach it over here onto the stud. Screws. God. Ugh, Chinese crap. Back to the fence. Um, last night I was working on the wiring for the um, the grounding rod and uh, and all of that, and I was having trouble figuring out. I did uh, the the um, lightning protector thing wasn't making a whole lot of sense to me, and uh, so I went back and did some research on uh, how that's supposed to be wired up, and uh, it's according to the Premier uh, Electric Fence Company. Their directions say you should have a separate grounding rod that goes from the uh, lightning arrestor to the grounding rod and then on the other side of the lightning arrestor it goes up to the um, to the actual uh, hot wire of the fence so that way if lightning strikes the hot wire which is what all the wires are on the premium fence they're all hot um, then the lightning will then go down to the least path of resistance which is through the lightning arrestor and ground, um, and into the into the ground. Um, here, I'm not. Uh, after thinking about it, I'm not too concerned about lightning uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, we've we're up here in the Pacific Northwest, and there hasn't been a whole lot of lightning storms in the area. And as you can see behind me is my chicken coop, but it's nestled in a bunch of trees. So I guess it's possible for the lightning to go down through past the trees and hit this little fence that's here, but I doubt it. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just guessing, but man, man really? So uh, I think uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So for now, I think I'm going to bypass the lightning arrester and uh, uh, I'll probably work it back in, but I just want to get the fence up and running right now. Um, and then uh, I'll go back and look at that again. Um, but uh, I think that's it. So I got, I got one issue here that I got to deal with right now. And that's um, I have a tree that is uh, right in the way. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about.